Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We are glad to see you all. It's an honor for us to join International Conference of Education, Teacher Training, and Professional Development University of Muhammadiyah Malang. In this opportunity, let us introduce ourselves. I am Ayu Prihartini, and here are my partner Fitri Wahyuni and Mr. Edi Susanto. We would like to present our paper entitled Student Study Habit and Academic Achievement of English Education Study Program at One Public University in Jambi. Before we begin, we would invite our explanation into some section. First, I myself will explain to you about the background and the research method of the study. And then Fitri Wahyuni will explain about the result and discussion. And the last one, Eddie Susanto will explain about the conclusion. Okay, let's start from the background of this study. The first point is learning environment in university is different from school. Actually, learning environment in university is totally different from learning environment in high school. The differences include the class, grade, responsibility, learning style, teacher, and test. In university, learning activities not only happen face-to-face -face in the class, sometimes, the student just get the material and assignment and need extra time to study outside. They get the grades on the test and not in all assigned work. The students are expected to be more independent and take the responsibilities about what they do. They need to schedule their own time. They need to read the material with any reminding from the lecturers and the lecturers would not bother about how much the student read and understand the assigned material. They may not always check all assignment but they will assume students can perform the same task in the test. However, some freshmen face difficulty to adapt with learning environment in university as quickly as possible. As the consequences, they might, they might get stressed, poor grade, and even drop out from the school, from the university. And the second one is study habits can be a threat predictor after standardized tests and previous grades. Usually, standardized tests and previous grades are used to predict the academic performance, but study habits were found to be used as the predictors. Those students who have good study habits are able to make study decisions and have high achievement motivation. Some people believe that study habits can be the third predictor of academic achievement after standardized tests and previous grades. Good study habits may produce positive academic achievement. So that's why we want to identify the study habit of students and the relationship between study habit and student achievement. And you can see the research question is, the first one is what study habit do students of English education study program in Jambi University have most? And the second one, is there any correlation between their study habit and academic achievement? Okay, let's move to the next section. That is the research method. In this study, we choose correlation methods since the purpose of this research is to determine the relationship between students' study habit and their academic achievement. And this study will be conducted in Jambi University. Population and sample, the total, we use total sample technique and the total sample is 69 students. We choose students on the sixth semester for some reason. Firstly, sixth semester, Students have experienced the first year as new students and have dealt with study habits as college students for years. Secondly, they still have some classes to attend in campus, so the six semester student of English study program will be accessible and appropriate for this study. And then in conducting the research, we will use questionnaire as the instrument. The questionnaires will be study habit questionnaire from Virginia Garden University. And the element of study habit is the first one, time management, study environment, test taking or preparation skills, not taking skills, reading skill, and also the writing skill. To avoid any misunderstanding and misinterpretation, the questionnaire will be written in Bahasa Indonesia. Okay, I think that's all about my explanation. Now we move to the result and discussion that will be presented by Fitri Wahyuni. Okay, thank you. In this chance, I will explain about the result and discussion. Based on the table, we can see that the mean from student study habits in time management as a whole was 2.53. From the mean, it can be described that the students sometimes had a good time management. They have a massive schedule for each semester and regularly update it for each week or day. Sometimes, 
They stick to the schedule. They still had time for exercise and socializing with their friends. And also had enough time to rest without disturbing their time to study at least two hours for every subject in each week. And finishing their assignment on time. Besides, they generally attended the classes in regular schedule. Next, the mean score of the study environment was 2.53. It means almost respondents sometimes had a good quality of study environment. They had a regular time to study in a particular area with an under control situation where there was less noise and distraction to make them still focus on their study. They, help, they also had a comfortable area when they were studying and everything they need around them. So they did not have to leave the study area to get that. In the other side, their friends rarely left them alone to study. They rarely used the chance to study between classes. <clears throat> in the, in the test-taking of preparation skills, the mean score was 2.32. It shows that respondents sometimes had good test-taking of preparation skills. They sometimes studied for each class every day. They started to give you the materials at least three days before major exam. Some of them had a study group, so they could discuss and solve their problem in understanding the materials and attended extra sessions given by the lecturer to protect themselves for the rest of the day. To gather any information about the test, including the types of the question. Most of the respondents could finish the test on time. After taking the test, they would give you or analyze if, if, if they did not well. So they could solve the problem they get while taking the test. In the next, we can see that the mean score was 2.58. It can be described that most of the students were able to take notes in class, kept up with the lecturers, and understood the concept at a time. They had an efficient system in taking the notes, so they did not have to twist them. Unfortunately, they were regularly giving their notes right after the class, even though they knew the important stuff they have to write along the lectures. Sometimes, they make notes based on the class materials that they give. They could paraphrase the information from the text into their own words. <clears throat> Next, we can see the average total was 2.19. As a whole, the dominant tendency of this element was some students and learn at the rate of 12 to 15 pages per hour for history type material. A small amount of the students matter for all classes before the lecturers. Some of the students could concentrate and understand the material without a reading from more than once. A greater number of students read the headings and chapters outlines first before the text. The students adjust their reading style for different classes. <clears throat> As you can see, the last one. The averages that range from uh, 2.18 to 3. It can be explained that the students, some students uh, are comfortable enough with the common of English grammar, punctuation, and spelling. They have a quick idea about what they had to do for writing assignment. Some of them made an outline about the paper systematically. In generally, they knew how to use the facility like library and internet to research their topic. A few of them started the research in time to complete it without stay up all night before the deadline. More of them were able to communicate effectively in the writing. Okay. Next, in the table, we can see the scores of coefficient regulation and the significant value. Uh, the scores of time management, the coefficient regulation score of the time management there is a negative symbol. It means if there is any relation between the time management and the academic achievement, it will be the negative effect. But as a whole, we can see the only one element that has the double asterisk symbol is the note taking scale, which the point is on 
0.326 in the significant value was the 0 0.009. <clears throat> it can be integrated to the degree among variable in fixed and product moment correlation. That correlation can be categorized medium. The double actress symbol shows that correlation is significant at the 0 0.01 level. The significant the significant value is less than 0 0.05. So hypothesis null is rejected. We can conclude that there is a correlation between not taking skill and academic achievement. To get a better academic achievement, the students can revise their habit in not taking skills. I think that's all for the result and discussion. <clears throat> Next slide. Okay, uh, thanks for the opportunity. I'd like to explain you about the conclusion of this research. Uh, the study habits that students in university do the most is manage the time includes all the six um, the student habits like time management, study environment, test taking or preparation skill, not taking skill, reading skill, and writing skill. And then um, for the conclusion of this research is, as we know, there is no the correlation between student study habit with academic achievement. And then uh, only not taking skills that show a significant correlation with academic achievement. Well, uh, that's our presentation today. Thanks for your attention. And as I say, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.